I'm so sorry, it's late. Pokemon fans, we're going to talk about episode 74 of Pokemon Horizons, and I'm really sorry that this review is late, okay? I, I completely fucked up my schedule over the weekend, and, and I literally didn't get to watch the episode until yesterday, but by the time I actually finished watching it, there was so much other stuff happening at work and a bunch of stuff that I wasn't able to get the recording done, so now you're getting it today, so I'm really, really sorry. Regardless of that, okay, I hope that you guys... Have a fantastic Thanksgiving. That's the first thing I'm gonna say. If you guys celebrate, honestly. This episode was good. I like, listen, they finally confirmed what we all knew since the beginning of the season. Well, since they introduced Lucius as a character, right? We all said Lucius is like somehow uh, an ancestor for Lico. Like that, that's been like hammered into like any fan that's been watching the show since his introduction, okay? Nobody, this doesn't catch anybody by surprise, okay? This episode, the, uh, what they revealed, doesn't catch anyone by surprise. However, what we didn't know, right, is that that Gibeon actually was a part of the original Explorers. So he was a partner to Lucius. And not only that, but his wife was also a part of the Explorers originally, which means we got to meet Liko's great-great-grandmother. <laughs> How crazy is that? I, I was not expecting that at all okay let me be clear i didn't think that she, i thought she was supposed to be related to brian okay when i initially saw her in the opening i thought that she was a relative of brian like an ancestor for brian and then you would tie in those three stories but apparently not there were there's they, it's literally just lucius in the game <laughs> and tarapagos is just her right that's the other crazy thing like we all assumed that tarapagos belonged to lucius but it, well actually i didn't okay i thought there was something fishy going on because if you remember when they first revealed that there were six heroes I was like, that means he has a full party of six. How the fuck does he have Tropicals? It doesn't count, right? Either it's just a wild Pokemon that just was on his journey with him or it belongs to somebody else. So I was right in my predictions that Tropicals didn't belong to Lucius. A win for me, right? Another point for Team Sorosan, okay? I read that like months ago. I don't remember what episode of review I was talking about that, but but I said it. I said it. <laughs> it's, in, it's in one of the video reviews, okay? You can... Look at the whole catalog, it's in there somewhere. <laughs> I remember saying it. Um, but we, I thought it was cool that we got to see like Diana's grandmother. Diana was cool too, okay? I'm glad that she's back. I hope she sticks around for a bit. It, I do want to say that I feel a little off because I, I, you know, I get a W for what, you know, I know about Tropicals. But I also get an L because Diana basically disproved my whole theory that Luca was part of the villain group, okay? Because she said that like Hamburg visited her right and she thought that he was trying to like get with the gang again right because they used to be like in an explorer group right but then she found out all he wanted was dependent which Liko had and so she contacted Luca to get in touch with Freed who then rescued Liko so I'm a little salty about that okay because I was very sold on that theory but you know it is a theory okay it can be disproven or approved correctly at any point okay it's, and it's not like I had concrete facts that she was a part of it. It was just a theory, right? So I'm a little salty about that, but you know what? Every once in a while, your boy Sarasan has taken out, okay? I, I, I wasn't able to call, right, that Luca was... I mean, realistically speaking, she can still be involved somehow. Same way, shape, or form. I don't know. Maybe she's a little salty that she didn't get dependent. I don't fucking know. But for, for right now, I'm going to take this as my theory has been disproven. And Luca is not working with the Explorers at all. But aside from that, okay, Liko and Diana's battle was great. Okay, Liko showed her, her growth, which is awesome. I kind of, uh, I feel a little weird because it still feels like Diana was holding back, even though she said, like, oh, I'm not holding back anymore. I, there, I still feel like Liko could have potentially lost, right? But I'm glad they gave her a W, okay? Liko has, has been struggling for one, okay? So I'm glad they gave it to her. I'm glad she's able to like surpass her grandmother. And I'm I'm really looking forward to where we're you know leading forward for the rest of the series. Like I, I really hope she sticks with us for for some time, right? Because Diana was a fun character when she was with us before. So I'm really and, and this is gonna help her out a lot because now she knows for a fact 
that she's related to Lucius, which means this is a journey that's been like part of her whole fucking family scheme forever, right? <laughs> she met her grandmother. So that, that it, I think she deserves to continue on with the crew and, and seeing this like like this path forward and actually like get to Raku and Oz. I guess now what the whole conspiracy is, is Gibeon actually Gibeon or is he the grandson of Gibeon, right? Because that's the, that's the whole thing that we're going with right now because Lucius is old as fuck, right? This man's been dead for years, right? We meet Diana's grandmother, okay? And Diana's old, right? So it's definitely been a couple decades, you know, if not a whole last century since this bitch is dead, right? And since Lucius is dead and Raftal is dead, right? So how the fuck is Gibeon still alive? So my theory is that either Gibeon... The original Gibeon is dead, just like Lucius and Raftal, right? I think that's the way her name is. But anyway, either he's dead along with them, or or he used the Recurium somehow, some way, to extend his life. So he rejuvenated himself or something along those lines. And so he's still alive, just out of pure chance, right? Because of this fucking magical crystal, and he's trying to get there again so he can regain his, his youth or whatever the fuck. The only thing that's confusing about this is, if this is the original Gibeon, how the fuck does he have a grandson who's the same age as Liko, or roughly around that same ballpark, right? Now, Matthew can't be more than 15 years old, okay? There's no fucking way. He is younger than Luca, right? We can all establish that, right? So how in the fuck did this man have a grandson who's that young. There has to be something going on that we're, we need more information, okay? Because I, I, at this point, I'm even doubting if they're fucking related. Or, 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 or the other potential theory is that if it is Gibeon, right? I'm gonna make this a whole video, but I wanna stay in here for, for posterity's sake, right? So if he's the original Gibeon, right? Then what we can try to like theorize is that his bloodline continued on, right? And of course, um, his his descendants know who he is, right? But for the most part, they all died out. So what we can assume or we can try to infer is that, that he adopted his great-grandchild, which is like Amethio's parents, um, whoever, like his dad or his mom, who the fuck, we don't fucking care, right? We can infer like maybe it's the, the male bloodline because, you know, Lucius' bloodline is all female, right? Just, just assumed that he's his grandfather. It was actually his great-grandfather, but he doesn't know that. And Matthew doesn't know that, that he's actually his great-grandfather, right? That's just a thought. Like I said, I might make that into a full-blown video. I don't know yet, but uh, I think we're gonna leave it off there, okay? This is a wild episode. We got a lot of new stuff that, that's been like lore-wise, that's been dumped on us, right? And we like it. We like to, to learn more about this world. We like to learn more about this world and all the stuff that happens in it. Right, so I'm really glad that they're expanding. I'm really glad that they're expanding on the lore here with, with all our characters. And I'm really looking forward to whatever it is that they're gonna bring in next. And uh, I think that's it. I think we're, it's a very chill episode. Well, it's a very chill review, I guess is the correct way to say it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, make sure to leave your thoughts in the comments in the comments section below what you guys thought about the episode my late review, whatever you want to say. Um, and we're going to leave it off there. So I have been your boy, Sorza Croxon, and I will see you guys in future videos, streams, shorts, and everything in between.